mess. No system at all. system too. It's the simplicity system of sewing and we're going to show you how really simple it is. It's just a matter of getting into the rhythm of sewing and the more you sew the smoother that rhythm becomes. We're going to make this jumper for our demonstration. It's designed for four different figure types. Miss and Junior Pattern 1270. Teen. Pattern 1280. And girl. Pattern 1290. Here are four girls in four figure types. Patricia takes a girl size 12 pattern. Teddy takes a teen size 12 pattern. Rita takes a junior size 11. And Dolores takes a missus size 12. Now then, to do anything in an efficient, systematized way, you start by assembling everything you need for the job. So when you plan to sew, at school, at the club, or at home, buy all the needed items at one time. Your pattern first, then the fabric, then the thread, zipper, trimming, or whatever necessary items are listed on the back of the pattern envelope. And when you are ready to work on the garment, do as Janice has done. Get everything together in one place near your sewing machine. Janice will make this jumper for you, and here are her matching thread, a neckline type zipper for the placket, and all her sewing tools. When she pinned her pattern to the material, she made sure it was laid on a straight grain. And when she cut, she cut with the fabric grain. Arrows printed on the pattern seam line point in the direction that is with the grain. After she cut, she used dressmaker's tracing paper to put the dark marking shown on the pattern onto the wrong side of the fabric. And she also marked the seam line ends. The markings you see here are actually much heavier than you'd make them yourself because we want them to show plainly. She assembled her work in units, all the bodice pieces in one pile, all the skirt pieces in a second pile. And until she is ready to work on each piece, she leaves the pattern pinned to it. The primer, or instruction sheet, that comes with the pattern, says the first step is to stay stitch the bodice front. Janice will do all her stitching with white thread so you can see it clearly. And to stay stitch, she puts the needle into the seam allowance, one eighth inch from the marked seam line, and brings her seam guide up against the fabric edge. On this round neckline, the stitching is done from shoulder to center front in order to work with the fabric grain. Now her stay stitching is finished on the bodice front. The next step is to make the underarm and waistline darts. 
She first folded and pressed the material on the straight line in the center of the dart. Now she pins it. Next, she stitches the dart on the slanted line from the wide end to the point. She fastens the thread at the point by back stitching, or you could tie the threads if you prefer. Then she clips off the thread ends. Following instructions in her primer, Janice next presses the underarm darts down toward the waistline. The waistline darts are curved darts, so the wide end is trimmed. and the remaining fold slashed open to the point. Then the dart is pressed open. And now we're ready to work on the bodice back. The same work is done on the back bodice as was done on the front. First, the stay stitching on the neckline, on the shoulders, around the armhole, and on the left side where the zipper will go. These waistline darts are straight darts, so they are not trimmed but simply pressed toward the center. The front and back neckline facings are now stay stitched exactly like the bodice neckline. To give the lower edge of the facing a clean finish, Janice turns under one quarter inch and stitches it. She's now ready to join the facings to the bodice, and she starts with the front. First, with outsides together, she pins them, matching the center front and the notches. To stitch, she works with the bodice side up. With her needle in the marked seam line, she moves the seam guide so it touches the edge of the fabric. Then, starting at the shoulder, she stitches around the neckline clear to the opposite shoulder. Now, in case you're wondering, isn't that stitching against the grain, remember that the stay stitching previously done holds the grain so the edge won't stretch. Well, I see Janice has finished stitching the facing on the bodice front. Next, she trims and clips it on the curve. Now she'll show you a little trick for getting a cleaner line when the facing is turned to the inside. She first presses the seam toward the facing. and then top stitches the facing to the seam. Notice that she works with the facing side up. Then she's sure the facing is spread out smoothly. Exactly the same work is done with the back facing and back bodice. First, stitch facing to bodice neckline, bodice side up. Then trim and clip the seam. Next, Press the seam toward the facing, and then top stitch the facing to the press seam. Janice will now join the bodice front and back at the shoulders. First, 
she pins the seam with outsides together. Next, she stitches the seam, starting at the edge of the facing and working through the armhole, easing the back shoulder slightly so it fits the front. The seam is then pressed open. The facing turned to the inside and the edge pressed. Now to face the armholes. And these facings are prepared just like the neckline facings. First, stay stitched. Then the lower edge turned under and stitched. The right and left armhole facings are put on in two different ways because the zipper is going in on the left side and extends clear up to the armhole. Janice will do the left armhole facing first. At the start, the work is just the same as it was on the neckline facing. And as you can see, she has already stitched it around the armhole, trimmed and clipped the seam, and top stitched the facing to the press seam. The next step on this left armhole is to stitch the facing to the bodice on the front underarm, taking a 5 8 inch seam. Then on the back underarm, the facing is stitched to the bodice in a one half inch seam. You'll see the reason for the different widths when you put the zipper into the placket. Now the corners of these short seams are clipped off and the seams trimmed. Then the facing is turned to the inside and pressed. and tacked at the shoulder to the neckline facing. The right armhole facing is put on just like the neckline facing. Stitched on around the armhole, the seam trimmed, clipped, and pressed toward the facing, and then the facing stitched to the seam. Now, with the facing end pulled out at the underarm, just as was done on the shoulder seam, the right underarm seam is pinned and stitched. Starting on the facing and stitching all the way to the waistline. This seam is then pressed open. The facing turned inside and tacked to the underarm seam and to the neckline facing at the shoulder. So now the bodice unit is completed and Janice is ready to work on the skirt unit. She'll start by stay stitching the skirt front waistline. It is not necessary to stay stitch the left side placket opening as was done on the bodice because this skirt is cut with the straight grain of the fabric at the sides. But because the center front and center back are cut on the bias, when you make this jumper, you should only baste those two seams and let the skirt hang overnight before stitching them. Then if the base of seams draw, clip the basting and allow them to drop before stitching them. However, we're not going to do that in our demonstration because we don't want to keep you here all night. So Janice just pinned the center seam of the skirt front and now stitches it from the bottom to the top, the direction that is with the grain. Next, she presses the finished seam open in the same direction, from bottom to top. After stay stitching the waistline of the skirt back, Janice then joined the center back seam and the right side seam and pressed them open. Now she is joining the side seam, but this is stitched from the bottom only as far as the notch to leave an opening for the zipper. After pressing the left side seam open, the next step is to join skirt and bodice. Following her primer directions, she first clips the skirt waistline to the stay stitching. Then with the bodice over the skirt so outsides are together, she pins the two pieces matching the notches, the side seams, the center front, and the center back. Next, she stitches the pin skirt and bodice together.
presses the seam up onto the bodice. Then on the outside, she top stitches close to the seam line through the bodice and the pressed up seam. Now let's just review joining the skirt and bodice again. First, cut the skirt waistline to the stay stitching. Second, with outsides together, pin bodice and skirt, matching notches, side seams, center fronts, center backs. Third, stitch the seam and press it up. And fourth, top stitch. And now all that's left to do is put in the zipper and hem the jumper. To prepare for putting in the zipper, Janice first pressed to the inside the 5 8 inch seam allowance on the front edge of the placket. Then on the back edge of the placket, she pressed 1 half inch to the inside. She is going to use a white zipper so you can see it clearly. The closed zipper is placed face up against the seam allowance of the back placket with the bottom of the chain at the bottom of the placket opening. You can either pin or base the placket to the zipper tape, easing the fabric to the tape. Janice will pin at the bottom and then just below the waistline seam. Then she turns down the top of the zipper tape, turning it toward the jumper fabric and pins the top of the placket to the tape. She has removed the presser foot from the machine and put on the zipper foot to make her stitching easier. Now, with the zipper open for about two inches, she starts stitching the placket edge to the tape. She closes the zipper when she has stitched down to where it was open and continues to the bottom of the placket. When the back edge is finished, pull up the zipper tab and pin or base the front edge of the placket to the tape lapping the front edge one eighth inch over the back. And be sure the waistline seam lines up on both sides of the placket. Starting at the top of the placket, about three eighths of an inch from the edge, stitch down to the bottom. Then, with the needle in the fabric, lift the zipper foot and pivot the work on the needle. Then stitch across the bottom to the skirt seam line. This is the way the placket looks with the zipper in. At the top, you sew on a small hook and eye. Next, have an even length from the floor marked on your skirt. Then put in your hem. You can finish off the hem edge in different ways depending on the material you use. On cotton, you could turn under the raw edge, stitch it, and slip stitch the turned edge to the skirt, like this. On jersey or heavy tweed, a good finish is to make a row of stitching about a half an inch from the edge, and then pink the edge and catch stitch it to the skirt, like this. On light wools or rayon or silk, a nice finish is to stitch bias seam tape to the edge and hem the tape to the skirt, like this. When the hem is finished, so is the jumper, except for a final light pressing. Now, wouldn't you like to see the finished jumper? Of course you would. And here it is, on the same four girls you saw before. Don't you agree that it is very becoming to all of them? Three of the jumpers are shown just as you saw it made, but the one worn with the black sweater has pockets on the skirt. You can put them on or not, just as you like. Don't you think anybody could make a jumper like that? It's so easy to do. I know you'll find it so if you just follow the simplicity system of sewing and get into that smooth sewing rhythm. Now, would you like to see some other kinds of jumpers that fit beautifully into a smart, modern Miss wardrobe? This plaid gingham has that fashionable long torso look. The pattern number is 1222, easy to remember and easy to make.
blue check looks ready for a date with his film, The Organdy Blouse. It's pattern number 1010. Doesn't this red velveteen have a look of elegance? It's the same pattern as the first one you saw in plaid gingham, number 1222. But doesn't it look different? These jumpers, too, you'll find very easy to make if you just do what your simplicity printed pattern tells you to do.